This video will cover the vertical and horizontal constraints. Nodes can be made horizontal and or vertical to other nodes through the use of the vertical and horizontal sketch constraints. Since the endpoints of lines are nodes, when these nodes are made to be vertical or horizontal to each other, the line itself will become vertical or horizontal. Vertical and horizontal constraints can be manually applied or automatically applied through inferencing. To apply these constraints through inferencing, while creating a new object, if this is the first item being created in the sketch, look for the vertical or horizontal constraint symbol that will hover near the new line's midpoint as soon as you have placed the first endpoint, but before you place the second endpoint. Placing the second endpoint while these symbols are visible, as seen here, ensures the appropriate orientation. If this is not the first item being created in the sketch, just before clicking on the first point for the item about to be created, look for the witness line, indicating vertical or horizontal alignment, to appear as seen here. Enter the first point while the witness line is visible. You may also see the vertical, horizontal, parallel, or tangent constraint symbol hovering near the midpoint of the line you are creating after you place the first point and before you place the endpoint of that line. These symbols provide a visual reference while creating lines and other objects. If none of these symbols appear during the sketching process, you can toggle them on in the settings area. To manually apply these constraints, first make sure status hints is turned on, select either the vertical or horizontal sketch constraint from the constraints box on the 2D sketching ribbon, and select an existing line or node. Keep in mind that the first point selected will serve as an anchor point unless other constraints or conditions prevent this from occurring. There are other ways these constraints can be useful. Not only can single objects be constrained to horizontal or vertical orientations, these same constraints can be applied between objects as well, as you just saw with the nodes, for example. The lower end of this vertical line can be constrained to be in the same horizontal plane as this horizontal line. In a similar manner, the centers of these two circles can be horizontally constrained to each other by selecting the centers of each circle. The vertical constraint would have set both circles in a vertical orientation to each other. In this video, you gained a practical understanding of the vertical and horizontal sketch constraints. These constraints are particularly helpful for setting items to vertical or horizontal orientation as these items are being sketched or afterwards. Since these constraints operate on nodes, they can also assist in setting separate items vertical or horizontal to each other.